Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, November 6, 2024 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Xavier today took a look at some a little bit older Python malware that still has a fairly low virus total score with only three antivirus engine that's actually detecting it. It's a relatively standard uh, malware with uh, the usual sort of remote administrator type uh, features. But the uh, one feature that kind of sticks out is that in addition to just doing simple screenshots, this malware can actually live stream the victim's desktop to a video server set up by the attacker. This takes advantage of a standard Python library and according to a quick demo that Xavi recorded and you can see that in the diary does work quite well and actually provides a quite good quality of uh, the video that's being streamed from the victim's desktop. An attacker could, of course, always also record these streams and then later review them for any potentially leaked information. And Google released its monthly update for Android for November. This particular update is significant because it does fix two already exploited vulnerabilities. One of the vulnerabilities is a approach escalation vulnerability in the framework. The second one affects Qualcomm components and uh, Google refers here to Qualcomm's upcoming bulletin for more details. Haven't uh, seen that being published yet, uh, but this one is also rated high and well, it's a kernel uh, component. So as usual, Android users should update quickly as these updates become available for their particular phone. And in the past, attackers have often used uh, very large and sometimes artificially inflated uh, files in order uh, to prevent anti-malware solutions from scanning malicious uh, files. Looks like according to researchers from Securonix uh, that, well, uh, attackers have sort of pushed that a little bit further now by actually delivering an entire Linux virtual machine. Now, this Linux virtual machine comes including the QE Emo emulation environment, very popular and capable open source virtualization system, and then implements a backdoor on the system the virtual machine is running on. This, of course, provides a little bit sort of a double protection from scanning by anti-malware. Anti-malware, first of all, shies away from the file due to its overall file size. And anti-malware will typically also not scan virtual machines because, well, in this example, it's a Linux virtual machine, which then, of course, will be running on a Windows host. The main hurdle here may, in the end, be the large download and any complications that may arise from installing a virtual machine in a Windows environment, which, of course, typically is relatively reliable. And researchers at Wallarm came across yet another way how attackers are sending legitimate looking fake invoices. We have seen this in the past where attackers have set up merchant accounts with PayPal and then use the PayPal invoicing system in order to trick victims into paying these fake invoices. The latest method apparently being used here is a DocuSign. DocuSign offers actually an API that allows companies to send invoices via DocuSign's system. This makes them, of course, more legitimate looking because DocuSign is a well recognized brand and also everything in these invoices is legitimate as far as DocuSign goes. But of course, the actual reason why the invoice was sent is not legitimate and also the company sending them in the end and receiving the money is not legitimate. This can be a little bit uh, tricky uh, to sort of protect yourself from, but it basically comes down to sound business practices that before paying an invoice, you actually make sure that an order was placed and some product was delivered. 
So don't just focus on technical solutions here. DocuSign, of course, is heavily impersonated. It's one of the sort of top brands when it comes uh, to impersonating VR phishing and the like. I would think that many of your users, if they're paying attention, are already a little bit more careful with DocuSign versus other means to deliver fake invoices like this. Haven't actually seen lately a lot of fake invoices or any fake invoices really delivered via PayPal. So maybe PayPal found a way to shut these bad actors down. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow.